let's revisit some of the uh, extreme and uh, oops sorry uh, changing meteorological conditions and their impacts on human health condition when we say human health condition we are talking about looking at physical and social socioeconomic vulnerabilities which are essentially very local you can look at global maps which we have been doing but we have to zoom in and uh, compute risks and vulnerabilities at very local scales where action needs to be taken to manage health disasters right um, so this is just a map that came out recently looking at newly emerging uh, re-emerging where is my here newly emerging re-emerging uh, and resurging diseases and one deliberately emerging disease like anthrax bioterrorism which we will not talk about became big news after 9-11 uh, the terrorist attack in uh, the US but since then it's not uh, been um, it's not occurred as far as we know anywhere uh, okay so in terms of emerging, uh, newly emerging diseases, uh, looking at rich countries, you have uh, the H2N2V influenza, cyclosporiasis, uh, some uh, version of variant of E. coli, uh, Bourbon virus, Enterovirus, Heartland here, Cryptosporiasis, Cryptosporidiosis, uh, Hepatitis, and even in the global south, you will still have uh, HIV, Ebola virus, Zika virus, and uh, so on, right? And of course, there are re-emerging, resurging diseases uh, which are making it to higher and higher latitudes, like West Nile virus here, Lyme disease, Ebola virus, of course, and you have drug-resistant malaria, you have TB, uh, you have enterovirus, Rift Valley fever, typhoid fever, and so on and so forth, okay? So even in a country like China, you have these uh, hot spots of uh, newly emerging diseases uh, like this version of E. coli and the various flus, Nipah virus, Hendrovirus, human monkeypox, uh, Ebola virus, and so on and so forth. Okay, so keeping all that in mind, one can also look at uh, the impact of. Uh, let's say a combined impact of population growth, urbanization, and global warming on the trends of these uh, extremes like drought, heat wave, flood, storms, and all hazards. This looked at a period of 1960 to 2014. And this region is dominated by floods and especially here, combination of hurricanes and their intensification rates getting in, uh, stronger uh, because of ocean warming and atmosphere warming. These are the percentiles, 50th, 90th and so on and the means. Um, so flood is a big uh, uh, concern which is made worse by uh, heavier rains brought by cyclones, sea level rise, increased storm surge and inundation associated with that. There are other uh, details like cyclones slowing down and stalling because of ocean war being warmer, heat content being uh, larger to keep the cyclone going, uh, which dumps more rain. For example, uh, I think uh, Hurricane uh, one of them that hit Houston a few years ago dumped some 36 inches of rain, three feet of rain, massive, massive, right? Uh, even the global south is affect, being affected by all hazards. Mediterranean is a hot spot for all hazards as well. There is one here where there is a decrease in the 90th percentile. Uh, there are a couple of drops here in the mean as well. And of course, you remember the 2010 Russian heat wave, which was devastating, 2003 heat wave in uh, Europe, which was devastating, and so on and so forth. So the question is, even when uh, things like uh, the monsoon change, uh, there is a strange combination of things that happen, as we will see a little bit later on. So talking about uh, getting local, let's start with this surface urban heat island intensi intensity uh, computed in this complicated wave. So this is the uh, urban uh, surface urban heat island intensity computation. Depends on global land surface temperature, uh, taking annual uh, land surface temperature, mixing with definition of urban and rural, what kind of buffer area you have in terms of transitioning to peri-urban and rural areas, which necessarily relates to land use change and uh, heat capacity and energy balance during the day 
urban regions can get heated up at night uh, they radiate that uh, thermal energy back to the surface and uh, make things really bad uh, so there is all these parameters uh, of obviously vulnerability also includes things like uh, GDP and population population density matters because even within uh, a city there are uh, neighborhoods where urban heat island can be much worse than another neighborhood with park for example uh, with a park okay so global main cities uh, surface urban heat island intensity and human activity map uh, looks like this here so these are negative numbers here and positive numbers going up to 15 degrees centigrade you can see some hot spots uh, here okay even in the US okay look at this now uh, we will look at one map where uh, the latest heat wave is devastating this region with all sorts of new records India has got some of the most uh, strongest urban heat island intensity regions so does China uh, so do these Southeast Asian regions and so on okay um, what do we do with it we will see later that we need to uh, go from these kind of global maps to city level and then within the city neighborhood level that's where social vulnerability and physical vulnerabilities combine to create risks of disease outcomes and mortalities and morbidities that's where action has to happen that's where early warning systems have to come in uh, to uh, manage the health disasters okay um, we will look at one example of the Chicago um, heat wave which produced some mortalities and also exposed the dependence of uh, vulnerabilities on the, the neighborhoods uh, of course that is related to per capita GDP uh, incomes uh, which can be limiting factors to deal with uh, heat waves for example even if there is a good forecast right if you're going to work and you don't have a car you have to take public transportation then you are likely to be exposed longer to heat waves and at home you may not have AC uh, or the fans to deal with effectively with these heat waves and so on so these are the kind of details that have to go into vulnerability computations and we will see one example of the social vulnerability computed over uh, the US uh, there are vulnerabilities also are very local then the, the variables you would use for computing vulnerability in the US would be very different for a country uh, from a country like um, India for example where uh, not just socioeconomics but castes and uh, other factors uh, feed into uh, your employment your income your vulnerability and your risk and so on and so forth okay so that's the idea of this chapter it's a brief introduction to how <clears throat> quantitatively we have to compare uh, compute risks at a very local level so that when early warning systems are developed um, they have to be developed which India is doing it already for example and US has as well you can get air quality forecasts um, heat wave forecasts ozone level forecasts and so on and so forth and they have to be combined and risk maps allow you to uh, look at vulnerabilities and how to reduce those vulnerabilities and reduce the risks as well that's the main purpose of this chapter